In this video, we're going to talk about three different ways in which we can reduce a ketone, one of which will go over the mechanism, that is the Wolf-Kishner reduction. So let's say if we have cyclohexanone. It's a six-carbon ring with a ketone on the outside. So one way we can reduce it into an alkane is by means of the uh, Clementson reduction which is a mixture of zinc, mercury, and HDL. So this is a great way to reduce a ketone into an alkane under acidic conditions. So the carbonyl group is replaced by the addition of two hydrogen atoms. So you can simply write the product as cyclohexane. Now let's say if we have acetone as our ketone. Another way in which we can reduce it into an alkane is using the Wolf-Kishner reaction, which is hydrazine, NH2, NH2, in an alkaline solution, potassium hydroxide, which is a strong base. Now you can also write hydrazine as N2H4. The final product will be an alkane. We're going to replace the oxygen with two hydrogen atoms. So this is a reduction reaction. So this reaction occurs under basic conditions. Now, is there a reaction that we can reduce a ketone to an alkane under neutral conditions? This is known as the thioketal reduction or the Mozingo reduction. And starting with a ketone, let's use acetone again. The first thing we're going to do is add a thiol, a molecule that has two thiol functional groups. We're going to get an intermediate that looks like this. Next, we need to add hydrogen gas using a rainy nickel catalyst. The sulfur atoms will be replaced with two hydrogen atoms, and so we have an alkane. So that's how you can reduce a ketone under mild conditions. Now let's go over the Wolf-Kishner reduction mechanism. So let's start with acetone. We're going to react it with uh, hydrazine. The nitrogen atom has a partial negative charge. So it's attracted to the carbon atom which has a partial positive charge. So this nitrogen is going to add across or on the carbonyl carbon, breaking the pi bond. So we're going to have an intermediate that looks like this. So now the oxygen is going to have a single bond, but it's going to have three lone pairs now with a negative charge. Now it's attached to a nitrogen that has two hydrogen atoms. Whenever nitrogen has four bonds, it has a positive formal charge. Hydroxide is a strong base, and it's going to be attracted to the hydrogen that is attached to the nitrogen, because it's acidic now. So we're going to take off one of those uh, hydrogen atoms, and once hydroxide grabs the hydrogen, it turns into water. Now we also need to protonate this oxygen because right now it's a terrible leaving group. And our goal is to get rid of oxygen, add hydrogen. So now that hydroxide, which is a base under basic conditions, grab the hydrogen, it turns into water, which is an acid under basic conditions. So this oxygen is going to grab a hydrogen from water, regenerating the hydroxide ion. So basically, what we were able to do is we transferred a hydrogen from one part of the molecule to the other part by means of the solvent. So now we have an OH group.
and the nitrogen is neutral. So everything is neutral now. So what do you think is going to happen in the next step? We need to get rid of the OH group. Now hydroxide is not a good leaving group, but another hydroxide ion can displace itself. This hydroxide is going to grab a hydrogen. The bond between the hydrogen and the nitrogen atom is going to break. Those electrons will be used to form a double bond, expelling the hydroxide ion. So now we have a hydrozone, which looks like this. So what do you think is going to happen next? In the next step, hydroxide is going to act as a base. It turns out that these hydrogens are relatively acidic compared to a normal uh, NH3 hydrogen. The reason for that is the conjugate base is stabilized by resonance. So let me show you. Hydroxide is going to grab a hydrogen causing the hydrogen-nitrogen bond to break, putting a lone pair on this nitrogen. So now this nitrogen only has one hydrogen left over, but it has two lone pairs, so it has a negative charge. Now this nitrogen can use one of its lone pairs to form a double bond, causing the pi bond to break, putting a negative charge on a carbon atom. By the way, this step is reversible. So now we have the resonance form of this conjugate base. So notice that the negative charge is shared between the nitrogen atom and the carbon atom. So now the carbon has the negative charge. So this carbon is going to act as a base. And it's going to grab a hydrogen from water regenerating the hydroxide ion. Our goal is to replace this group and add two hydrogens to this carbon. So this is the first hydrogen that we've added so far. So now what is our next step? What should we do after this. Once again, we need to use hydroxide to remove the last hydrogen that's attached to the nitrogen atom. So hydroxide is going to take away the hydrogen and put another lone pair on nitrogen. So this nitrogen now has two lone pairs and a negative charge. So now, it can form a triple bond, putting a negative charge on its carbon. Now, carbanions are relatively unstable. So this carbanion is going to quickly react. But the driving force for this process is the formation of a very stable nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond, which is the main molecule, or the predominant molecule found in the air. Air is basically like 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and then the other 1% is other stuff. So this molecule is very, very, very stable, and it leaves the solution as a gas. So this last step is irreversible for the most part. Now the carbanion will quickly grab a hydrogen from water because it's not very stable, regenerating the hydroxide ion. And so that's how we can put two hydrogen atoms on this carbon. But now let's propose another mechanism in which we can avoid the formation of a carbanion because carbanions are not very stable. So let's start here. Now notice that hydroxide grabbed the hydrogen and turned into water. Let me put this somewhere else though. 
So the water molecule that was just formed is still in the general vicinity. So what can happen at this point is this lone pair can form a triple bond, but instead of putting two electrons on the carbon, those electrons can go straight for the hydrogen, generating the hydroxide ion again. So doing it this way, we avoid the formation of an unstable carbon ion intermediate. The other mechanism is still fine, but this works too. We still get the same product, nitrogen gas plus the alkane.